Hey there everybody and welcome back. In today's video I'm going to be covering 10 quick and easy tips to help you find the best used car online for you. Now before we get started just to walk you all through this is not an exhaustive list and at the end of the day you need to make sure that you're doing whatever's best for you in your specific situation. Now you may notice I'm screen sharing instead of walking through a dealership and that's because most of the searching today can actually be done online. So I'm going to walk you through my top 10 tips as well as provide a couple of websites or resources in the description below. Just to help you streamline the process and hopefully make it a little bit less stressful. Now before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. So I'm going to start out with the most generic piece of advice, but I will explain why it is so important. And that is number one, which is decide on a budget and decide if you have a variance. And I'm going to show you why this is important. So we're going to start a search that I'll be using for this video. So I really like the Toyota 4Runner. So we are going to pick the Toyota 4Runner on Carfax's website. And then we're going to choose a sample zip code. Now you can use CarGurus, AutoTrader, Carfax. You can also use whatever your local dealers are. But the idea here is if you're looking for the best deal for you, maybe you want something with no accidents that has a service record available, and you've decided, all right, my budget is 15,000. Well, you can go over here to price and set this to cap at 15,000, but maybe you've decided, you know what, I want something that has 100,000 miles or less. Well, you may find going through, if you were to organize these, let's just say by lowest price first, you may find you know what, I might not be able to find something with that mileage in my budget. So here's where you kind of have to make the decision of, well, what if I were to increase the budget to 21,000? I can make those monthly payments work. Let's just decide that's a sample. Then you can go through and decide, okay, is there anything with lower mileage in that new budget? So make sure that you've established your budget and potential variance up front. Next up is determine your payment method and terms before you visit any dealerships or try to make any firm decisions. The reasoning for this is it's very easy for you to say, okay, let's just say I want this car. Let's just say out the door it's $10,000 to make it an even number. Well, you walk into the dealership and you say, and they start to ask you questions like, what do you want your monthly payment to be? If you go ahead and just disclose everything up front, then it's really easy for them to manipulate the price to potentially make you pay more over the life of the loan. Even if you have a down payment, even if you have pre-approval, it's very easy to get lost in the numbers. And the other thing to consider here is there's multiple negotiations when you go to a dealer. If you are trading in your car, you could potentially be looking at a negotiation for your car's trade-in value. Then you have to negotiate the price of the new car, and then you also have to negotiate the price of the actual interest rate if you're getting a loan. So there's multiple things and other factors in there, but just worth considering. So make sure that you've decided, maybe get a pre-approval from your bank if you can do that without getting a credit pull to decide, okay, if I want to spend 10000 on a car, what would my theoretical interest rate be, and then work out your monthly payments. You can Google car loan payment calculator and figure out, okay, what would this be for a four-year loan? That way you know that your ideal monthly rate, but also don't lose sight of the overall price. It's really easy to find something you can afford long term, but may not necessarily be the most sensible option when it comes to total cost. Next up is decide about features. So I'm going to be using Carfax here, but this is the third tip, which is what features do you want? Most cars, most companies have different models. So if we want this 4Runner here, let's just say we don't care about the year, but maybe we decided, you know what, I really want to get the limited edition. Or maybe you want the off-road edition. There's tons of different options that most dealerships are going to offer. And then you also have your engine type and you have your interior and exterior color and popular options. Maybe you want specific types of wheels. Maybe you want um, just a specific type of feature or package. So just bear that in mind when you're doing the search and don't be scared to open up your search radius a little bit. If it's possible for you to extend your radius beyond 25, 50 to 100 miles, you open yourself up to a lot of different options. It may also be worth considering trying to find a vehicle close to family or friends. If they have the ability, if you can like pay them to have someone go take that car to a mechanic and look at it for you, and then you could just go visit and then pick it up while you're there. So just a couple of things to think about. Next is 
Warranties. This is a very big topic of conversation. If you're looking for a CPO warranty, that's the one that I would personally recommend. I have had those on vehicles in the past and they have actually turned out to be very useful, but the CPO warranty, which is certified pre-owned, is only available at the dealerships that actually make and distribute that specific car. So for example, for a CPO warranty on a full runner, you would have to go to the Toyota dealership to get a vehicle with this, and it has to be under certain criteria. So for example, the 4Runner that's 10 years old is not going to be a CPO vehicle. You can look up each individual dealership to figure out what the criteria are to get a certified pre-owned vehicle, but typically it's going to have to be made within the last typically like three to five years, and it has to fall under a certain mileage. And as the mileage increases, certain aspects of the warranty change. So for example, it could start out with bumper to bumper covering paint, but after maybe 20, 30,000 miles, it only covers certain aspects. And then typically the last thing to go is going to be the powertrain warranty. So you can typically get warranties through third parties, but whether you're doing CPO or not, bear in mind that often it can come with a slight increase in the cost of the vehicle. And if you're getting something that's newer, that might not be something that you want to factor into your budget. So do your research on the warranty in the company and what the warranty covers to make that decision best for you or to make the best decision for you. <clears throat> now, next up is research the best and worst years for the car. So for this theoretical example, I've looked up best year for Forerunner. And I'm not going to click on any of the links, but I just want to show you a lot of these websites are going to tell you maybe the best generation is going to be, or the best year would be the 2008 model. And that's typically going to be based on vehicle history and dependability awards, but it's also going to be based on the number of complaints. So a lot of these companies will do research over all of the vehicle years and figure out, okay, maybe the 2008 has the lowest number of complaints so far. And then also research the worst year. So you may find that the worst year forerunner is something like, let's just say it's a 2007, although I don't have that, but maybe the vehicle that you found is a 2007 and it seems too good to be true. Well, maybe that's one that's starting to show issues. For example, if there's a vehicle that has a bad year for transmission problems, there's just a lot of reports and the vehicle you found seems like it's a little too good to be true, but it is a reliable vehicle. Well, it could be because they found out, you know what, the transmission was skipping a little bit, or maybe it wasn't shifting gears as well. So they thought that maybe this is that year or that pro a year that has that problem. So just bear that in mind. So try to look up the best and worst years to determine if you're getting a good deal for the overall vehicle itself and if it's something that's going to last you. Now, number six is going to be determine if any maintenance or work needs to be done. I'll put these two links in the description here, but from edmunds.com, you can check out the car maintenance guide. So you can go through and let's just find a 2008 Forerunner. So we're going to go down and find Toyota, and then you can find the Forerunner, and we'll just choose the top option. And let's just say this is at 100,000 miles and you can click go. And then you'll see the general reviews up top, and then you'll see recommended service schedules, so you can choose the intervals here, but the idea is things that they're gonna recommend, coolant, oil, oil filter, and then labor actions of things to inspect, total costs. So this is just a sample guide. This isn't gonna tell you everything that needs to be covered, but the idea here is do some research into, if you're getting a used vehicle, and let's just say you're buying something that has over 100,000 miles, Maybe you look at the Carfax and find out, wow, the owner did all of the oil changes, but they haven't done anything else. Well, maybe it's time to do some of the basic maintenance. So you need to figure out, is that cost going to be worth it? So an example here is, if we looked up at this 4Runner, it has 220,000 miles. If we check this out, even though it's a great, reliable car, if we found, you know what, they've only done oil changes throughout the entire history of the vehicle, well, then likely you're going to have to do some kind of basic maintenance, which could end up being relatively expensive. So some vehicles, for example, they use timing belts instead of timing chains. You might have to get that replaced, which could end up being hundreds of dollars. Maybe you're going to need to look at basic things like having a water pump replaced or other basic maintenance. So, so typically people will trade in vehicles when warranties run out. So this could be at, let's just say 12 or 15,000 miles, 30,000, 60,000, 100,000. But the idea is they're trading in the vehicle, so you might need to pick up on the maintenance where they left off, which could often be 
easily between one to three thousand dollars just to replace some relatively basic parts so just make sure that you need to figure out if it needs like any kind of fluids to be changed or belts uh, larger ticket items like replacing timing belts or water pumps things like that and you can also go to this Edmonds website link will be in the description and figure out scheduled maintenance costs at certain mileages for different vehicles so just something worth considering there now the next thing so that is item number six so number seven is getting a trusted mechanic to check out the vehicle and make sure that everything is in good shape just because you're buying at a reputable dealer who says that they've checked everything out doesn't mean that they have checked out everything that your local mechanic would and it's always in my opinion good if you can afford to to get a second opinion so take it by a local mechanic and just have them look over it they'll be able to tell you you know what if you don't have a Carfax on the vehicle that shows all the service history, they'll be able to tell you if they see anything that's a cause for concern. Maybe the dealership has, um, let's just say that they checked out the brakes, but they maybe the car is due and it's just at the cusp. Like if the car can make it another 3,000 miles before you need new brake pads. Well, if you take it to a mechanic, they'll be able to tell you that. Whereas at the dealer, they may not always list the life expectancy for brake pads or tires or things of that nature, but also the mechanics will be able to look at it and tell you, you know what, for this year and model, I've seen a ton come through that end up having water pumps fail at 200,000 miles. So they'll be able to give you some good advice. And then number eight is make sure the Carfax or car history is clean and shows consistent mileage. So when you're buying from a dealer, a great option or a good thing that they have is typically you'll see that they have service records available or service history, and you'll typically have a Carfax that you can view. So you can really click on any of the vehicles that work best for you, and you'll find a little Carfax button. Most of the time, the dealerships will pay for the Carfax. So you just want to see that it has consistent maintenance. So you need to find the maintenance schedule for the vehicle and hope that they're they're basically making the right maintenance or they're following the maintenance routine. So if you find a car with 200,000 miles on it that only has 12 service records available, often those service records could even include inspections for the local state. So the chances of this vehicle having all of the oil changes and all those records up to date are going to be slim to none. So this would be one that would be a little bit concerning to me, and I would definitely want to make sure that the uh, that this was taken to a mechanic to look at as opposed to let's just say this vehicle here although there's no images if there are 37 service records available that's much more likely that they had regular maintenance and pre potentially some preventative maintenance as well so you don't want to have to sit there and buy a car with 200,000 miles and pray that the previous owner did everything you it's easier to just be certain so a carfax or um, there are other reports out there that help you to determine what's the best option for you. So that's just something that's worth considering, making sure that you can verify that it was taken care of. So now we're going to number nine, which is consider your research options um, and basically just figure out how can you be creative in your search. So you can look up similar models. So here's what I mean by this. If we find this 2007 Forerunner here, and it has 178,000 miles, and you're trying to figure out, all right, well, I saw this YouTube video that said that I need to figure out if there's any preventative maintenance. So you've gone over to Edmonds, you've seen the maintenance schedules here. So now you're trying to figure out what would I expect this car to need at 200,000 miles? Instead of sitting here and trying to research all of these different forums, because you're going to find people that had a forerunner at 200,000 miles that put a ton of money into it, and you're going to find people that basically paid nothing. So what you can do is you have the Carfax for tons of vehicles, so you can do your own research. So my recommendation is look if you decided this is the car you want, but you didn't see any preventative maintenance. So you haven't seen them do anything besides oil changes. What you can do is you can go look up Forerunners just like this one with more mileage and check out their Carfax. So an example would be this vehicle, let's just say this one right here is another 2007 with 50,000 more miles. So you can compare the two and say, all right, I want this vehicle for another 50,000 miles. So all you need to do is find a couple of Forerunners that are similar year and similar make and model. And then you can look up their Carfax and see, wow, you know what? This Forerunner made it to 220,000 without any service records or any big ticket costs. Now, you do need to remember that not everyone reports to Carfax. So this isn't something to be a guarantee. I know for a fact my vehicle is going to last another 50,000 miles. It is just a general rule of thumb that could help. 
but you'll notice, okay, if there wasn't anything big up until 220,000 miles, it's going to be a safer bet than if you just took a guess and just decided, hey, maybe this will work for me. So just be creative with your research options. Check out forums, but bear in mind that with forums, you don't necessarily know that that person even owned the vehicle. Whereas if you check the Carfax, it's much more likely that someone actually reported the maintenance to Carfax. So it'll just help you with those research options. And then lastly, coming in at number 10, be creative, checking reviews and sticking to your terms. The car buying process is very, very stressful. So make sure that when you're finding these cars, if you're spending a week, a day, a month, maybe three, five months or more, don't think, okay, you know what? I found this one here. It's in my budget. This is the one that I have to get. And then don't just get sucked into the trap of buying the car just because you think it's the best deal. If it has a clean service history, it checks all the boxes, but you get in and something feels off, whether it's the buying process. Maybe you're a little concerned this one only has four pictures, and then you get there and you find out, oh, the back bumper has tons of scratches, or it had been in a wreck previously, or something wasn't noted in the Carfax that's a concern. Don't think that just because you're sitting in the car with a car sale, like a salesperson right next to you, that you're forced into buying it. In fact, if you're willing to walk away from the dealership, it is entirely possible that they're going to be willing to call you and make you a better deal because they knew that you came there to check it out to begin with. And most dealers, their goal is to get you in the car. So just don't forget stick to your terms. If you get into, if you sit in the chair with someone and they decide, you know what, I know it was 18800 but we're going to tack on this fee, this fee, this fee, and then we're also going to end up having to extend your loan, but we're still going to get you that monthly amount that you wanted. You're just going to have to pay for an extra two years. That wasn't in your plan, and you may not even know if the car is going to last an extra two years. So make sure that you are picking out a good vehicle that you feel comfortable with, and if you feel hesitant at any point in the buying process, it doesn't hurt to stop, take a minute to think. There are always going to be newer cars coming out on the market. There's always going to be a good time to buy a car, so don't worry and feel forced or pressured into the process. So I hope this helped. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below. Maybe you've had some cars that have worked out really, really well and have been great deals, or maybe you have other tips that you've picked up in the car buying process. I'd love to hear what your thoughts are, so drop them in the comment box below. And again, these are just general ideas and guidelines. This is not going to be a surefire way to find the best car, but it is at least hopefully some tips and tricks that can help you out through the process. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below, and I'll see you all in the next video.